Now, the trial of the NHS nurse Lucy Letby is continuing at Manchester Crown Court. She wept as she told the court that she was devastated at being accused of murdering seven young babies and the attempted murder of ten others. Asked by her defence lawyer if she'd done anything wrong, no, she replied. She told the jury that she'd only ever done her best to care for the babies. This is a podcast about one of the most anticipated criminal trials for years. It involves the most shocking of allegations the alleged murders and attempted murders of tiny, premature babies at the hands of a neonatal nurse whose very job it was to look after them. Lucy Letby is on trial at Manchester Crown Court, accused of killing seven newborns and injuring ten more at the Countess of Chester Hospital in Cheshire. The jury has now been sitting for eight months. Prosecutors have finished outlining their case and the court has begun hearing from the defence on why they say Lucy Letby is not guilty of the 22 charges that she faces. I'm Liz Hull, Northern Correspondent for the Mail. I will be in court to report on the case as it develops. And I'm Caroline Cheatham, a broadcast journalist. Every week we'll examine what's happened and bring you the details behind the headlines. This is the trial of Lucy Letby. So we're here unusually on a Wednesday, Caroline, and that's because there was so much at the end of Nick Johnson Casey's cross-examination of Lucy Letby that we thought it warranted another episode this week to bring you up to date with everything the jury's heard. This podcast will go further than the headlines and news reports, but at times you might wonder why we aren't bringing you more detail. Well, that's because we can only tell you what the jury have heard, and that's to preserve the integrity of a fair trial. Seven of the babies died, ten survived. Every one of these babies was or is someone's son or daughter. And the mums, dads and families of every baby are present in court, listening to every detail of how their child was allegedly killed or harmed. In this episode, we'll hear the prosecution claim that Lucy let be tampered with the care of a baby to try and cover her tracks. We'll hear that she allegedly used the nursing handover notes discovered at her home as crib sheets to look up her victims. We'll hear claims she was not isolated from her friends, but out on the razzle, drinking with colleagues in the months before her arrest. And we'll hear that she's accused of being a calculated murderer who killed babies for attention and sympathy. Welcome to episode 40, A Very Calculating Woman. So after concluding his cross-examination of Lucy Letby on the babies involved in the case, Mr Johnson moved on to several general topics he wanted to ask her about. He'd said he'd split these subjects up into four. The text messages, the gang of four, the Facebook searches and her social life. He started with the text messages and began by taking the jury back over messages she'd sent to Dr A on June the 27th, 2016. Now, this was the day that the manager of the neonatal unit, Erian Powell, had called her just after half past five in the afternoon and told her not to come into work for her scheduled night shift that evening. Here's a reminder of their exchange. Arian just phoned, telling me not to come in tonight and do days instead. I asked if there was a problem and she said no. Just trying to protect me a bit and we can have a chat about it tomorrow. But now I'm worried. Please don't worry, I'm expecting the same conversation tomorrow. As the medical lead for Thurs slash Fry, I'm expecting they'll want to chat. I can't do this job if it's going to be like this. My head is a mess. Why is she ringing at this time? There must be a problem. Lucy, you did nothing wrong at all. It is an odd time to ring, but you've had a rough few days and a good manager would realise that. I'm having a meltdown. Mr Johnson said the messages showed that she was panicking because doctors and managers had sussed that she was behind the baby's unexpected deaths and collapses. You knew they were on to you? No. You were having a meltdown, weren't you? Yes. You were worried that the hospital must have sussed out what you'd been up to? No, that's not right. I am having a meltdown. What grade of meltdown were you having? At this point... Quite a dramatic one. What was dramatic about it? That it was all happening at the very last minute into the evening. 
Just the timing of the phone call was enough to send you into a massive meltdown. Yes. Babies collapsing was not normal, was it? No. Babies dying was not normal, was it? No. Many people have remarked that you were very calm, yet this sent you into a plus plus meltdown now. Because this is personal. You put on a professional head and control your emotions at work. While this is an event in my personal life. You were worried they had sussed you out, weren't you? No. Now we know Lucy Letby worked her last shift on the unit a few days later, on June the 30th. And Mr Johnson said that by then she already knew people were suspicious of her. So she put her thinking cap on and came up with a plan to cover her tracks. He claimed that on that shift she'd purposely removed a bung on the cannula of a baby not involved in the case so she could put in a formal complaint, which is known as a Datex, the next day. And she'd written that the mistake risked introducing an air embolus into the child, and we know it's the prosecution case that an air embolus or air bubbles being injected into the circulation is how they say those children who died were murdered. This Datex, he said, was her insurance policy, because she was worried she was being found out. You had your thinking cap on, didn't you? No, that's what I found with this baby. I felt it had to be documented. You removed the port and reported a clinical incident to cover yourself. Bit of an insurance policy going on here, wasn't there? No. So you can suggest this is a hospital where things are so bad, people even leave bungs off IV access for these children? No, that's what I found. It covered you for accidental air embolus? No. Mr Johnson then moved on to the Gang of Four. And you'll remember these are the four consultants, Dr Ravi Jayram, Dr John Gibbs, Dr Stephen Breary and a doctor we can't name but who we've been referring to as Dr B. Now Lucy Letby says they had it in for her and that they conspired to blame her for failings at the hospital. Mr Johnson said that when it came to pointing out failings or shortcomings in the baby's care, she'd only done so in 10 of the 17 cases. And in each of these, the shortcomings she'd highlighted were minimal. But he asked how she believed those shortcomings added up to a conspiracy against her. I'm not saying specific issues. I'm saying in general, I don't think a lot of the babies were cared for on the unit properly. Does it come to this? In your view, the care at the Countess wasn't very good and they've made these allegations against you. Yes, I believe there were shortcomings of the medical team and they've been put on to me. I'm not a medical professional. I don't know what should or shouldn't have happened with those babies. You are saying it is above your pay grade to determine what the shortcomings are? In the medical profession, yes. Mr Johnson then asked her about the Facebook searches that she'd carried out for the parents of the babies involved in the case, sometimes months or years after they died or been treated on the unit. Lucy Letby says she searched for them because they were often on her mind, but Mr Johnson accused her of checking up on her victims and suggested that she'd kept the nursing handover sheets found by police at her home as memory refresher documents. She used them to help her remember the names of her victims and to help her spell their names so she could look them up later, he said. On the 5th of November 2016, you were searching for the mother of baby E and F the mother of baby G and baby I. What did they have in common? They are babies that are on my mind. Why were they on your mind at the same time? I can't answer that. Sometimes a lot of babies and families were on my mind. Because you'd killed them or tried to kill them? No. You are a killer who was looking at your victims, weren't you? No. Mr Johnson wound up his cross-examination by challenging Lucy Letby's claims that she was left upset and isolated from her friends and what she called her work family when she was moved off the neonatal unit into an admin role that she hated in July 2016. She said she was told not to speak to any of her colleagues, apart from Dr A, Nurse Mina Lapalainen and her best friend, a nurse we can't name. But Mr Johnson presented her with a 26-page dossier of her active social life, which he said disproved the sob story she'd given the jury. It included pictures from her Facebook page and mobile phone, which showed her out drinking Prosecco and cocktails with other friends from work, pulling funny faces at a New Year's Eve party, 
and going on holiday with her parents before her arrest in July 2018. Phone messages and diary entries from a trip to London with Dr A were also put up on the large screens in the courtroom. What's in the document? My social life. You know it disproves everything you said about contacts with friends, don't you? I disagree. We find times, times and more times of you out drinking with other people from the unit. Yes. It is peppered with you out socialising with lots of different people on that unit. Yes, at times, yes. All the time, really. You had a very, very active social life, didn't you? Yes. You were exaggerating, weren't you? No. You were telling the jury a sob story that you had been cut off from your family as you define them. No. Looking for sympathy. Yes, it was a very difficult time. Mr Johnson also pointed out various meetings with Dr A at the end of May and a trip to London at the beginning of June 2017, which we talked about in the bonus episode last Friday. He also accused her of lying about her arrest when she told the jury she'd been taken to the police station in her pyjamas. She insisted she had a nightie on with tracksuit bottoms and trainers, but he said she'd also had a tracksuit top on and accused her of being calculating and telling lies deliberately for sympathy. You are a very calculating woman, aren't you, Lucy Letby? No. You tell lies deliberately, don't you? No. The reason you tell lies is to try and get sympathy from people, isn't it? No. You try to get attention from people? No. Killing these children got you quite a lot of attention, didn't it? I didn't kill children. You're getting quite a lot of attention now, aren't you? Lucy Letby glanced up at Mr Johnson, but did not answer him. Now, the prosecutor then moved on to the green note, which was found by police in Lucy Letby's diary. On that note, which was headed not good enough, Lucy Letby had written in capital letters, I am evil, I did this. We've referred to this note a lot in the podcast, but it is probably worth reminding you again of its contents. There are no words. I am an awful person. I pay every day for that. I can't breathe. I can't focus. Kill myself right now. Overwhelming fear. Panic. I'll never have children or marry. I'll never know what it's like to have a family. No hope. Lucy Letby told the jury that she wrote the note after her removal from the unit when she was worried that she may have made mistakes at work that could have inadvertently caused harm to the children. But Mr Johnson said the truth was that she was out on the razzle drinking fizz and going to the races in the two years before her arrest. And she wrote the note because she knew she was a killer. You felt like this because you knew you'd killed and grievously injured those children? No. That's the truth, isn't it? You are a murderer. No, I am not. You have murdered many children. I've never murdered a child or harmed any of them. So that's the end of Mr Johnson's cross-examination of Lucy Letby. At this point, Liz, she'd been in the witness box for 14 days and had faced his questions for nine of them. But actually, it wasn't quite over, was it? The way the system works in England and Wales means her barrister, Ben Myers Casey, then has the opportunity to ask her again about anything that's come up in the cross-examination. It's called the re-examination. So for about two hours, Mr Myers had the opportunity to go over things with her, which Mr Johnson had highlighted. And she agreed with him that she couldn't have been expected to know what effect staffing issues had on the babies when the unit was busy or if doctors had provided the right levels of support. He also asked her about a handful of the specific allegations, including about whether she'd ever accepted Dr Jram's version of events relating to baby K. And she said she hadn't. And Mr Myers also took her through the prosecution dossier of her social life. Photographs of you out on the Raz with your friends. Drinking fizz, going to the races. Did you have a good time? Yes, there were times in those years that I was having a good time. And you felt like this because you had killed and grievously injured these children? No. He also asked her about a post she'd put on Facebook on New Year's Eve 2016. The post read... I'm not the same person I was when 2016 began, but I'm fortunate to have my own home. 
I've met some incredible people and I have family and friends who have stood by me regardless. Thank you to those who have kept me smiling. Wishing every happiness to us all in 2017. Mr Myers asked her what changed in those 12 months. I was not the same person. I had lost my confidence. I was just not the same person. Some people may think, from looking at these photographs, that you were enjoying yourself. How does that tally up with you saying you had lost your confidence? Despite what was going on, I had to try and find some degree of quality of life. There are things I enjoyed over the years, but that doesn't take away from the fact that I had changed as a person. She admitted she did go on to have contact with nursing colleagues following her removal from the unit, but insisted it was purely social. Did you ever want to hurt any child to be happy? No. To be excited? No. Or because you were bored? No. To get attention from anybody? No. Have you ever wanted to hurt anybody in your care? No. How content were you in your life before you began to get the blame for all of this? I had a very happy life. So that's it for episode 40. The jury have now heard all the evidence in the case, and on Monday we'll bring you the conclusion of Lucy Letby's defence, and the first part of the judge's summing up, when Mr Justice Goss will direct the jury on matters of law that they must apply when they begin their deliberations. I'll be in court as usual, and you can read my reports in the mail and on Mel Plus. You can also follow me on Twitter, at Liz Hull. You can give us a rating and you can share the podcast. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Lucy Letby Trial, or you can follow me, at Radio Caroline, or send us an email at thetrialoflucyletby at gmail.com. See you then. <laughs> <laughs>